right. Just a couple of minutes late. Had uh, had to make sure everything was set up properly. Um, but yeah, looks like looks like we are good to go. How's everybody doing? Mobius Y here. Time of recording this Thursday, June seventeenth. Got a special stream going on tonight uh, because we're taking a look at some of the stuff that came with the Federation's DLC. Now, unfortunately, we, we won't be able to look at everything, sadly, because uh, I don't have a save file ready. In fact, I, uh, I deleted all my saves, as a matter of fact, because new update, new DLC comes out, and I just go, eh, start all over with um, my not my save files that I use for direct to video, direct to YouTube videos, as well as Iron Man's, etc., etc. But anyways, let's do the posting, share that we are live. And uh, this might not be a full two-hour stream tonight. I'm just going to show off some of the cool stuff. We'll see how long we can uh, go for to make this interesting. But, um, yeah, hopefully I'll make this a full two-hour stream. Those of you watching this in the future on YouTube, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy the video, do give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out. And, of course, leave a comment down below to help out with the YouTube algorithm. For more Stellaris Console Edition content, subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. The goal for 2021 is... Blah, blah, blah. The goal for 2021. Blah. I need to not mumble wrap that word out. Mumble wrap. That's something I learned in the last two days. That's apparently a thing. Anyways, the goal for 2021 is to try to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of December. It's a pretty tall order, but I think we can do it together. So hopefully you join us on the road to 10k. And don't forget to check out the links in the, in the description below. There's one for the official Stellaris Discord, where you can become part of the greater Stellaris community. And there's a big, which has a big section for us uh, console edition players. There's thousands of people in that Discord that you can chat and interact with. There's also links to my personal stuff. For example, my uh, Twitch channel, which I streamed this off of. Give me a follow there. There's also a link to my Twitter feed. Another place to give me a follow. Uh, it's a great way to keep in touch with me, and I post important announcements all the time. Last but not least, there's a link to my own personal Discord for fans of my content to freely join. That is a fantastic way to uh, keep in touch with me on a daily basis as I frequent it every day. As mentioned, all right. JB, what's up? Nope. <laughs> this is going to be epic, says Strength Norse. I don't think it's going to be that ep epic. Fuck yeah, says JB. Okay, so we're not, we're not starting a stream game. Tonight is not going to be starting... A stream game. We're just going to try to look at a lot of the cool stuff that came with the game. Uh, an easy thing that we could look at is what the new origins are and the kind of flavor text when you start a new game with them. But first, we also got uh, updated to Stellaris version uh, 2.8.1. To make sure that you actually did download the update, just go to the settings screen and in the very bottom right, it's it should say there, V colon Butler V 2.8.1 blah, 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 after all that. If you can see that, that means you are on the updated version of Stellaris Console Edition. So if you're unsure, do check that out. Hey, Razor, what's up? Uh, I'm doing okay. Uh, I, was, I was able to sneak in a uh, launch stream tonight, so looking forward to it. Semper Buffo, what's up, buddy? Uh, a feature overview. Uh, pretty much, I have more alloys than minerals. Uh, like stockpiled or producing but uh, anyways so yeah that's how you check if you've downloaded the free update the free update also brings in a bunch of cool stuff you've got the starting or sorry not the starting the home system for the uh, Tianqi space whales you've got the home system for the space amoebas as well and there's a bunch of uh, quality of life improvements that were done we're gonna take a look at a couple of those like the radial menu that sounds pretty neat um, so the big thing that came with uh, I forgot the name of the DLC. The big thing that came with uh, Federations that y you can play around with in um, Empire Creation is we got a lot of new origins. Uh, a lot of them. You can even see that there's Necrophage down here, but you acquire the Necroid Species Pack. So, um, the default... If you remember, the default um, origins are Galactic Doorstep, Lost Colony... And then we go to the very top, Prosperous Unification. Prosperous Unification is like the go-to default um, origin that most of the preset empires are set behind. And th that's fine, because Prosperous Unification is actually one of the better uh, origins to go with. 
Um, if you have Utopia installed, you have both Mechanist and Syncretic Evolution. Mechanist allows you to start the game with a few robot pops and the technology to build more, and it reduces uh, the upkeep of robots. Syncretic Evolution has it so that uh, some of the pops on your planet, when you start the game, they're of another subservient pieces, uh, species, another subservient species. Um, so you, you basically start off where it's like, bam, you already have a second species that you can enslave, which is like 99% of, of what I do whenever I pick Synocratic Evolution. Um, so those are from Utopia. With Apocalypse, we've got uh, Life Seeded, which turns the home world into a size 25 Guile world with r several rare planetary features uh, that allow you to uh, harvest some strategic resources. Your habitability preference for your starting species is set to Gaia world, making other types of planets undesirable. It's actually a pretty tricky start. Your home world is a is really good starting world, but it's very difficult to expand when you pick life seated. Same thing with post-apocalyptic. This is also an apocalypse. You start on a tomb world, get the survivor trait, which grants you plus 70% tomb world habitability, and you have plus 10 years leader lifespan. It's still a little difficult to expand because some some non-tomb worlds are eh, kind of iffy, especially if they're on... Um, if I recall right, um, you can still pick like your 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 home world starting climate like alpine for example but it's turned into a tomb world and you have tomb world the tomb world uh tomb world habitability from the survivor trait so you can still you should still be able to colonize alpine worlds but other like most everything else is normal and tomb worlds are more um uh what's the word i'm looking for <laughs> appealing um, so we, if you look here, there's a lot of other origins. Tree of Life is actually also a Utopia one because it's for hive minds. Um, so this is another um, origin from Utopia. Uh, Calamitous Birth you get from Lithoids, where you can create meteor colony ships that slam into uh, new colonies, and they affect, and it, it gives it a planetary thing that affects its habitability. Uh, but meteor colony ships uh, can be built with minerals and they move faster than regular colony ships. And then, of course, there's resource consolidation, which is from Synthetic Dawn, where when you're playing as a machine empire, your starting world is a machine world. This is a pretty powerful uh, origin. Uh, starting off on a machine world is quite good. But as you can see, there is a lot of new origins. Uh, first one, Remnants. I think this one will also be available if you don't have Federations, but you do have... Um, Ancient Relics, because Relic Worlds, if I recall right, Razor can double check this with me. Doomsday! Exactly, Joe. How's it going, man? Thanks for being here tonight. Feds, show us the new shit. Yeah. So, Feder um, that was about, what, that was about, like, eight origins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, yeah. Uh, sorry, nine origins. So that, and that's with all the other DLC. Federations adds Remnants, Shattered Ring, Void Dwellers, Scion, On the Shoulders of Giants, Common Ground, Hegemon, Doomsday. Uh, so Federations adds eight more origins. So like almost half the origins that can be unlocked in the game are from Federations alone. Um, so it adds a lot. Uh, Remnants has you start on a Relic World, which is a really, um, it's kind of equivalent to... Um, for example, you were um, you're, you're sort of a fallen empire if you think about it. The, the funny backstory it gives you when you uh, take the remnants um, origin and start the game. It's kind of like you were a fallen empire at one point. Um, a relic world is like a a formerly fully colonized, fully inhabited kind of world that's been you know devastated and all that stuff, and you can turn it into an Achaemenopolis down the road down the road. Um, if I recall right, uh, as I said before, you can get this origin with Ancient Relics, I think. Or at least you could on PC, so I can't remember. Would work well with the Messenger Quest from the Horizon Signal line. Oh, yeah. Because <clears throat> you were altered. Oh, yeah. That's true. That's a good way of looking at it. Um, Shattered Ring. This is like the go-to oh, super-duper OP one. <laughs> Um, so you start on a partially destroyed ring world. Uh, so, so you actually start on a habitable section of the ring world. But if I recall right, it's two other sections that... Sorry, there's three other sections that are destroyed, two of which can actually be repaired and um, uh, rehabit rehabitated. 
Uh, they can be colonized on yet again. Uh, this is an extremely powerful origin. Like, extremely powerful. Um, it's straight up overpowered. But <laughs> origins, and, uh, origins and stuff like that, not everything in this game is designed to be perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Uh, Void Dwellers. This has you start off with three orbital habitats and not on a home world, uh, and you have the technology to build more. Members of your species thrive on habitats and pr produce 15% more resources there. Uh, you have a severe habitability and growth penalty on all normal planets. All of them. Not some of them, all of them. And hydroponic farms have plus one farmer job to help you out with that um, uh, production of food because it's quite difficult to do on a habitat, so you get a bit of a bonus there. Uh, Scion, a fallen empire, has meddled in the development of this civilization for thousands of years, guiding them onto a path of their choosing. This starts you off as a vassal of a fallen empire, and you tend to get goodies from said fallen empire. Um, so I do believe you start off knowing where the fallen empire is located in the galaxy. We will check that for sure in a little bit. Uh, Galactic Doorstep, that's a regular one. Uh, on the Shoulders of Giants, this is a very story-driven kind of origin. Due to some unknown past, this civilization has hidden boons in their solar system, placed there by a mysterious benefactor. Uh, so you start with an archaeological site related to a mysterious benefactor in your home system. Uh, by completing that archaeological site, uh, you are sent on um, an exploratory journey through other star systems in the galaxy to discover where these boons granted to you came from and who this benefactor is it's very story driven it's pretty it's pretty cool i i already know what happens unfortunately I've, I've actually not even played it uh but i've watched uh videos in the past so i know what happens it's kind of spoiled for me so i don't want to do that for anybody else who has never experienced it you just got to try it out for yourself sometime uh common ground this civilization established early contact with their immediate alien neighbors. Finding strength in their differences, they soon decided to face the future and whatever it might bring together. So this starts you off in a federation, and you have the, the federation tradition in the diplomacy tree unlocked right at the start of the game. You start as the leader of a galactic union federation with two additional members. So a galactic union is kind of like the default federation type. Um, there's additional federation types now that... Uh, with the Federation's DLC, if you have that uh, downloaded and active. Um, there are other types like Hegemon and Research Cooperative and stuff like that. Um, and Martial Alliance, I, be I believe, is the other one. Martial Alliance, excuse me. Uh, but the Galactic Union is like the default one. So you have two other neighboring uh, empires right next to you, literally one hyperlane away, and you just immediately start the game in a Federation with two other... Um, with two other AI, or two other um, two other empires, basically. Members will occupy any guaranteed habitable world slots near your home system. Uh, so that can be difficult. You could have a tougher time finding guaranteed habitable worlds in the immediate area to be able to expand. Uh, the next one at, right after that is Hegemon. Instead of starting in a uh, Galactic Union Federation, you start as uh, the leader of a Hegemony Federation with two additional members. So a Hegemony is... Uh, fairly different. You get different bonuses uh, from leveling up that fe particular federation type, but there is also one leader of the federation, and it's typically the strongest empire in the federation that leads the he hegemony. Um, not like Common Ground, where presidency is granted um, to individual empires over set amounts of time, called terms. A hegemon is different. It's typically the strongest empire leads the entire federation, and it gets the additional bonuses. I do hope that my headset is working tonight. And uh, yes, it's working. Okay, good. I <laughs> just had to double check. Um, next up, this is, I guarantee this is the uh, origin that we're going to use when we start a new stream game uh, a little later next week. This is Doomsday. This civilization's homeworld is highly unstable and it is only a matter of time before it explodes. Their only hope is to seek refuge elsewhere before it is too late. So it gives you a warning that this is a challenging origin because your homeworld will explode within 35 to 45 years after the game starts. So you have to find additional colonies 
to colonize and try to get as much of your population off of your home world before it goes kablooey. Valuable resources from the doomed planet's mantle boost production on the surface. No guaranteed habitable worlds will spawn near your home system. So that's part of the reason why it can be considered difficult. A, you lose your home world, and B, you don't get those guaranteed habitable worlds uh, that almost every um, every other uh, type of origin grants you. Uh, to be able to explain, ex to be able to expand early in the game, so guarantee that we're going to start off with Doomsday. So let's quickly make a, an, we're going to make a super duper quick empire that we're just going to use for. Um, ooh, Jesus! Whoa! Hey, we got a, we've even got a little uh, species portrait under machine for whenever we get uh, Necroids DLC downloaded. Oh, there's one for Plantoid as well, and then Necroid. You can so you can see the species pack the necroids portraits without even having the dlc you do not own this dlc thank you very much all right well that's cool um okay anyways so yeah let's just uh i didn't mean to do all that crap so let's go with a humanoid appearance species name i'm just going to randomize it prosnackens sure uh ran huh? what are we gonna yeah, we'll just sure whatever big sneeze oh my goodness excuse me sorry about that um Two streams or more if you don't get screwed. Yeah, no kidding. No dick, Nick. <laughs> nice username. How's it going, buddy? Um, so I'm just going to pick intelligent and leave it at that. Uh, we'll just stick with that particular trait. Uh, ruler. Don't care. Y button a bunch. There we go. Uh, and then we'll just... Blah, 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 blah. There we go. Pick pick random stuff. Hey? That, that, sure, that looks, that looks fine. Uh, what kind of room do we want? Yeah, let's put her in a room of rocks. Why don't we? Um, big view screen. There, that'll, that'll work. Hairstyle. Yeah, let's go all the way back. There you go. There's super duper edgy. Perfect. And uh, bip, 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 bip. I guess it don't really matter. Sure, this will do. Why not? Um, okay, name a class. Home world name. Bloop. Random city appearance. Uh, Necroid city. You can see the uh, cities. Sorry, you can see the um, the cityscape. So that that's from future DLC, obviously. Now you'll notice that chain that in the background city background screen because we're starting on a relic world for uh with the remnants origin it doesn't actually change it does if you pick something else like say shattered ring for example you can see the ring in the back of the planet uh if you change it to life seated because you're on a guile world you still see the kind of utopian landscape but the ring going up in the background is gone if you go prosperous unification it's dependent on what climate you pick so that like that's a really cool thing void dwellers obviously you're on a habitat etc etc but uh, let's get going here remnants okay government and ethics let's just pick random stuff here how about that and uh we'll go with that yeah sure and then uh we'll just randomly pick a couple there we go cut through politics and mining guilds sure i don't care uh, empire name hit the y button there you go that's perfect oh you have unsaved changes. Are you sure you want to exit Empire Creation? Cancel. Easy now. Uh, we'll just go Humanoid Ships. And then Advisor Voice. We'll just Priority leave it uh, original. Quickly quickly putting stuff down. <laughs> we rushing. Yep. Good men eat some basic ramen and Sprite Zero. How are you men? And just a question. Are you mostly a tall or wide build person? Put the Coke down. No. <laughs> It's, what if I told you it's Coke Zero? It has zero calories when I snorted into my brain. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so we're going to take a look. The, the flavor text is different when you pick these different origins, too, which is pretty cool. So let's just go with this. Sure, this is our empire. I'll change the origins, and we'll just pick other crap um, later on. So let's go ahead and make it a small galaxy. Yeah, we'll make it a ring shape. AI empires, sure. We'll have a couple of those. Fallen empires, zero. Marauder empires, we'll turn those off. Tech tradition cost, leave that low. Habitable worlds, turn that up a tad. Primitive civilizations, up a tad. Uh, turn this way up. Not that we're going to get this late in the game, but, you know, whatever. Uh, victory, your grand admiral, scaling difficulty. Uh, aggressiveness, empire placement, advanced neighbors off. Airplane density. You know what? Let's change it to clusters. Um, abandoned gateways, let's drop this down. Guaranteed habitable worlds, Karen veneers on, Xeno compatibility off, Iron Man mode off. Uh, what's happening, Moby? Whole lot of nothing, Professor Payne. Good to see you, buddy. So we're just gonna we're just jumping in uh, to a few games here and we're gonna check out the different flavor text on some of these origins uh, when you pick 
uh, when you pick some of the really unique origins that comes with the Federation's DLC. So the, the really cool thing is that uh, the little kind of backstory flavor te the little backstory flavor text is drastically different from what it used to be. It was almost always the same. Uh, it had three paragraphs. The middle one would be slightly different depending on your ethics and civics for your um, for your spacefaring empire. But in this instance, this is a lot more dependent on the origins you pick. So with the Remnant's origin, your background story goes like this. Once our empire spanned the void, once our fleets controlled much of the galaxy, then came defeat and the fall. Finally, after millennia of purgatory, it is time to return to the stars. At long last, our civilization has rebuilt to the point of interstellar travel. The galaxy shall be ours again. Several regions on Savasia are still ruined. Clearing these areas may reveal lost resources and forgotten technology. Sorry, why our, are our traits lacking? I just quickly picked that one and didn't want to dick around with it too much. We're not really playing this for very long, Razor. We're just jumping in super duper quick and then jumping back out, changing the origin, starting a new game. So, uh, Relic World. Let's take a look here at the summary. Habitability plus 180%, apparently. <laughs> A city once stretched across this entire world. Only ancient and abandoned ruins remain now. Their original inhabitants long since departed. So it's a size 22 world, so it's a pretty big size world. And there is the option to restore a Kiminopolis, but this is way later on. You have to have the anti-gravity engineering technology, and you have to clear all the tile blockers uh, on this relic world before you can restore the Acumenopolis. And there's a lot of tile blockers on this starting relic world. You have your usual industrial wastelands, uh, two of those, plus a sprawling slums to give you a pop once you clear that. And those are the usual 120 days, 300 energy to clear it. But then you have several of these ruined arcologies, and there's quite a few of them. One, two, three, four, five of them to be, uh, to be exact. So the base time it takes to clear one of these is 365 days. That is a year. 750 energy and 250 minerals. Uh, clearing them increases your max districts by one, but obviously clearing all of them along with the other tile blockers, once you get enough resources, 20,000 minerals and 200 influence, you should be able to try the Restore Achaemenopolis planetary decision, and bam, your homeworld turns into an Achaemenopolis. It takes a while. Okay, hab 100% and plus 80%. Hmm. Not a bug at all, right? Look at yeah, that's that's intentional, right? That's that's not that's not a bug. No. That's a feature. <laughs> uh, I'm just teasing. Apart from that, it's uh, largely a very um, very kind of standard thing. So you got it's a large size. Ooh, hey, they kind of changed that. Now it shows the total growth it used to be that uh, green 3.0 meant that uh, you had immigration that was increasing growth speed by three points, but that's a little bit different. Um, anyways, uh, so we actually have a station in orbit? Oh, that's because it's surrounding the moon. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump out to Galaxy View really quick. You'll notice there in the little box when I move the cursor over our uh, home system... Uh, you have the option to press A to view this system, but there's also press and hold X to open the radial menu. So that'll be square on the uh, um, PlayStation Square, I believe so. Yep. So we hold, press and hold that. By tapping it, obviously, it just does that. So you got to press and hold it. And I'm sorry if I just caused any ep ep epileptic seizures. And what you could do is you could select all the cool things that are in that system that you control. So on the top left, we have Savasia. Uh, our Empire Capital at the top is the um, Starbase. On the top right, we can select all military fleets. Bottom right, we can select a science ship. At the very bottom, we select our construction ship. And then the lower left, we select uh, a military fleet. Uh, obviously, when you have the radial open, you move the stick in the direction of one of these things, and it will stay there. And then when you let go of the X button, uh, it, will, uh, it will select it. So if you want to deselect it, you either wait a second, and it goes away, like so. Uh, because if you hit the opposite direction, it just selects the thing in the opposite direction. So if you don't want to select anything when you close out of the radio menu, give it a second, and it disappears, like so. Okay? So that is had a dude in the Discord who couldn't reform his government to add his third civic as a machine. That sounds perfectly normal. 
100% normal. Totally intentional, Razor. I don't think we should have to worry about that, right? <laughs> Let's take a quick look at just a couple more origins. Uh, definitely the Shattered Ring, uh, the Voidborn, and I think uh, the Hegemon uh, origins uh, real quick here. So let's go select Empire, and we need to select the, uh, where are they? Prosnakan Interstellar Union. There we go. And we quickly edit them. Oop. Uh, like so, go to Homeworld, change the origin to Shattered Ring, and then we back out. Uh, no, I want to. Sorry, we go to Summary, and then we hit Confirm. Yes, Save and Replace. Done. And then we select this Empire. Very good. And we're good to go because the settings are the same. So, like I said, this might very well not be a full two-hour stream. Uh, unfortunately, I will not be able to stream Mass Effect tomorrow. I, do, I actually have family coming over sometime tomorrow. And they'll be here for a few days, so I'm not sure when I'll return. I would like to start a new stream game in Stellaris on Tuesday of next week. Uh, so that'll be, what, June 22nd? Uh, provided, uh, provided, you know, everybody leaves by, like, Monday. It, de it depends on when everybody takes off. If, if they're here Tuesday evening, obviously I won't be able to stream. Uh, I'm fairly certain they will still be here Monday evening, so I won't be able to stream Mass Effect that evening, which is unfortunate, uh, but it's all good. Okay, so, Shattered Ring Origin, and the background text goes like this. If we ever knew how our people arrived on Savasia, our histories have long forgotten it. What we do know is that just over 2,000 years ago, some inconceivable cataclysm destroyed much of the Ring and killed most of the population, and that our people eventually rose from those ruins. Our civilization has grown, flourished, and now stands ready to explore the galaxy, whether again or for the first time. But despite all our progress, we still have a long way to go before we can understand and repair the ring world, which is our home. So very, very cool uh, flavor text for starting that off. So as you can see, uh, where it, it's, it's this system with a ring world, but despite it having a ring world, there's still some additional planets and stuff in here. Uh, if you recall, uh, constructing your own ring world uses up the planets and, and any other stellar bodies in the system in the construction of said ring world, uh, and then they all disappear. However, this ring world system, you still have those available to you, so you get additional resources from space in your home system. When you start on a ring world, that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, at the bottom there we have Savasia. This is our starting, uh, our starting thing of thing of a bomber, and we have an agriculture se segment already constructed to uh, create a crap ton of farming jobs and uh, producing a bunch of food for us. Uh, we have the usual buildings unlocked: admin office, research labs, alloy foundry, civilian industries. Um, summer. If we check out the summary. As you can see, different, uh, what's it called? Different, um, different starting stats. Uh, casual 103 food. Yep, that's more than you'd get <laughs> normally. Rare planetary features. An arcane generator. What is an arcane generator? There's also some decrepit tunnels, which cost um, 500 energy and require 300 days. Or sorry, 360 days. Wow, talk, uh, reading is hard. Arcane Generator. Produce, this produces uh, 10 energy credits and 2 volatile motes uh, each month. And it also adds plus 5 amenities to this ringworld section. What up, dude? Been a long-ass time. Yeah, no shit, Lord Narco. How's it going, man? Good to see you. Um, so, with that plus 2 volatile motes, uh, it's actually fueling... Sorry... It's main upkeep of the agriculture uh, and agri moats uh, as upkeep. You still need to build three more segments, but they cost 2,000 minerals and a bunch of strategic resources. So it could be a while before you're able to construct one of these research segments, unless you do ye old um, internal market playing around. But we can't even do it at the start of the game because we don't have any of those for upkeep. But I digress. Uh, so clearing these tile blockers. Uh, gives you gives you some minerals and gives you some uh, uh, flat amount of uh, strategic resources. So if you clear one of these decrepit tunnels, you get the 100 gases or 100 crystal or 100 uh, volatile motes. 
and you should have enough strategic resources in order to uh, build a commercial or a research segment or even another agriculture segment uh, if you so choose. Um, so as you can see, there are two ruined ring sections to the east and west. These can be uh, rebuilt and then colonized. Of course, it costs you know 10,000 alloys and you need the mega engineering uh, technology in order to do that. However, this last one was smoked by a little thing called the interloper and it says irreparable damage this portion of the ring cannot be repaired um, whatsoever it's toast absolutely toast so i like to think that uh if you ask me the interloper is like a rogue planet though which are a thing uh rogue planetoids that uh roam the stars uh, and are not in a fixed orbit around um, around a star, you know. Then the, these things actually do float through the galaxy. Uh, and in this case, this rogue planetoid came into our star system, got captured by the star's gravity well, and was flung inwards until, wham, it slammed into that section of the ring world. That's the way I look at it. And if you ask me, I think that's, uh, what, what do people usually call that? Environmental storytelling? That is the story that I get from looking at this busted up world and busted ring section. It's a shattered world, as you can see, so that's the impression I get. Whether or not it's actually true, eh, I don't really care. Now, fun fact, a cool thing that you can see from the update is we now have a section for mega structures. We have two ruined ring sections, and then once these are um, repaired and colonized, they will then show up under our planets uh, section at the top there but this is really cool and we have this new section showing where we have mega structures within our empire all right let's get uh, let's get the fuck out of here check out the another origin uh void dwellers that's another one that people were really really looking forward to we'll check out the flavor text uh blame the patarians <laughs> um asteroid x57 or whatever the number is i can't remember uh, I think it's... I'm pretty sure it's just Asteroid X57. I should go do that mission. I'm finishing up on Novaria in my, uh, in my current Mass Effect playthrough. Um, okay, so what do we need to do here? Change the whole world, go to Origin. So we looked at Remnants, we looked at Shattered Ring, we looked at Void Dwellers. Or sorry, we're going to look at Void Dwellers now, so let's confirm this change. And we pick this Empire again and fire up a new game. You're right. Okay. I like being right. It makes me happy. <laughs> um, yeah, Asteroid X-57. Okay, so the Prosnack and Interstellar Union, we now have selected the Void Dwellers origin and the uh, species background goes like this. To most, the vacuum of space is a hostile environment to be conquered or overcome. To us, it is home. For thousands of years, our species has resided on three space stations, each orbiting a different sun in a trinary star system. Whether they were built by our ancestors or someone else, we do not know. Although our biology would suggest that our species at some point originated on a planet, recorded history makes no mention of it. Some speculate that the shattered planetary remnants found beneath one of our stations is the lost homeworld of our species, but the truth may never be known. It has only been a few centuries since spaceflight allowing travel between our three stations was invented, or rediscovered, depending on how, who you ask. Suspicion and mistrust gradually gave way to trade and mutual cooperation. By the time of our first hyperdrive, the three habitats had united under one flag. So, as it suggests... When we go to our home system... Ooh! Whoa! Look at that fancy space dust in here. That's cool. Um, we go in here and we start in a trinary system, as you can see. Here's a B, for example. And uh, we've got one of our habitats over here. Uh, Air Jamma's treasure. And as you can see, we have people living on it. Eh? Pretty cool. Uh, orbital habitat, habitability, colony, development, speed, and habit <laughs> habitability 100%. Habitability plus 70%. <laughs> Not quite as good as the Relic World. Clearly the Remnant start is better because you have a bigger habitability bonus on top of the plus 100% habitability. Yep. <laughs> Here is our second habitat, Cortol's Station. 
Uh, this one has a reactor and a trade district constructed along with a habitation district. So it's producing some energy credits for us, uh, a little bit of unity, and is generating some trade value. Uh, I didn't really look at the first habitat there, my bad. Uh, this habitat has a trade district and an astral mining base, so it's produced a few miners' jobs to uh, create some minerals for us. And then we have our supposed home habitat of Savasia. Uh This one has a research district uh, on it, as well as a hydroponics farm to create some farmer jobs. So that's the thing. I kind of feel like the particle effects are a little lackluster compared to PC. I mean, it's something just hurts when you've seen it better. Yeah, that's I mean, that's, that's fair. I wasn't expecting, you know, a crazy grand display or anything like that in all honesty. That's just me. Um, it looks cool. Eh, yeah, I don't know. I'm sure I'll find things to nitpick about uh, over time. I just haven't really had the chance to. I, I only just got home and like downloaded this right away and it just finished downloading like right before the stream so i haven't had time to play around with it very much um but yeah so as you can see trinary system and we start on three uh orbital habitats this is actually a very powerful start it might look like it's uh on the weaker end uh in in the beginning but this is actually a really 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 powerful uh bonus I suppose you could say uh, because you don't just have your home world where you are growing pops to expand your economy you have three habitats so you right off the hop you have three times the population growth uh, from most other origins uh, obviously it's not the same population growth it's only 2.7 each month as opposed to 3.0 uh, but still it's nothing to scoff at um, and obviously it plays very differently than when you start on an actual planet you have to really really manage the per, the particular habitat districts that you are constructing uh, and you also have to will have to construct more habitats within your territory over viable um, locations uh, because you need them to be producing the resources that your empire requires uh, okay so we're going to modify the origin again really quickly and that was void dwellers now we're going to do uh, let's just go ahead ooh Start as a leader. Requirements does not have egalitarian. Oh, shoot. Hang on. Let me change that. Ooh, easy. Let's change egalitarian to authoritarian there. That's fine. And now we change our origin to hegemon. This civilization established early contact with their immediate alien neighbors. Gradually, over the span of a century, they masterminded the birth of an interstellar union in which they would have a dominant role. So now we're going to start with a hegemon... Um, Um, we're going to start with the uh, Hegemony uh, Federation at the very beginning of the game. A hegem as I said before, a, a, a Hegemony is different from a Galactic Union because you get uh, some different bonuses from it, uh, as well as uh, the act of imparting leadership of the Federation is different from simply, you know, the next Empire gets presidency, that kind of a thing. Uh, so, the background story, when you take the Hegemon origin, goes like this. Decades ago, when our first crewed sublight probes visited the star systems neighboring our own, we discovered the presence of two distinct alien civilizations. Like us, they were on the verge of developing practical interstellar travel, but their governments were weak and disorganized. Recognizing that their strength would add to our own, we began to gradually push for a, for a political union under our supervision that would unite our three civilizations. There was resistance at first, but eventually the benefits of sharing in our leadership and ambition became too obvious for even them to ignore. A new order has been established. So when we fire it up, we'll take a look at the uh, galaxy view really quick. Uh, we pretty much just start on the ye regular old uh, homeworld of Savasia. It's a size 16 uh, continental world. Kind of your basic homeworld start, but when you go to the galaxy map, you see oh look, you have two alien civilizations neighboring you in the very next hyperlane. We have the Uthonian Syndicate and the Gurite. Yeah, the Gurite Trade Commission. Um, so they are actually in a federation with us, therefore we share vision with them. Uh, they are considered allies, hence the blue uh, icons for their ships and all that good stuff. 
And uh, I do believe we also start with the, the Federation tradition unlocked, which, yes, it is, uh, in the Diplomacy Tree. So that's one tradition down, four to go for that one. And we can go to the Federation screen, and we can take a look at our Federation that we started with. So the difference between... Uh, the key differences between a Hegemon and a Galactic uh, Galactic Union are some of the bonuses you get. Level 1 perks, Hegemony. Federations of this type are most often built around one powerful empire surrounded by lesser satellite states. Member modifier. Members cannot freely leave the Federation without the President's approval. If the President refuses, the member gets the secession and casts his melee to leave the Federation. So they have to go to war with you in order to leave. And if you say no... You're staying. You are staying under my thumb. Then they're just like, well, we don't want to be under your thumb anymore. Level two. Uh, the level two perks of a hegemon. Uh, the first one: strength through unity, freed of the toxic internecine bickering that characterized interstellar relations before the rise of our union. Partner states can now focus their energies on productive labor for the good of all. Uh, this gives no effect to the president, but members receive plus five percent resources from jobs that's pretty decent levy exemption leading by example can be a powerful and inspiring thing and thus the leader is free of any restrictions that would present the, that would prevent this excuse me president modifier federation president contributes to federation fleet capacity without deducting their own naval capacity that was always one of the downsides to uh, being in a federation, especially in older versions of the game, is that it really chopped down on your naval capacity. So having a level, being uh, in a hegemon, being the president of the hegemon and having it getting up to level two uh, means that it's no longer, it's not doing that, which is a pretty interesting bonus. Uh, and then the last one is Federal Envoys. The better future we're striving to build will only work if all beings are aware of what we mean to achieve. We intend to become a pervasive, persuasive force for peace in the galaxy. President Modifier, available Envoys plus one. One more powerful Envoy. Envoys are really, really good. I don't, I don't, I can't stress that enough. Envoys are really, really good. Level three. These are the perks that a level three Hegemon gets. Uh, greater Purpose. The grand idea which unifies our peoples is more important than the whims or convenience of any individual being. Sacrifices must be made on the path to progress. No effect to the president, but members have another plus 5% resources from jobs modifier. Uh, so this actually stacks with strength through unity, so it should be a plus 10% bonus total. Welcome in nature. Regardless of cultural or biological differences, growth of the Federation is to everyone's benefit. Federation modifier, new members impose a 50% smaller cohesion penalty to the Federation. So when you have a new member join, the penalty to cohesion is chopped in half with that. Join or die. So this is a uh, this is a huge perk that you get playing as uh, a, a hege uh, in a hegemony uh, federation or when you take the hegemon uh, origin. You want to try to get your uh, federation to level 3. Uh, as soon as possible so that you get this particular perk. If they're not with us, they're against us. Any and every force that oppose us must be considered a threat and dealt with accordingly. This gives the president the established hegemony war goal to force a non-Federation empire to join the Federation. So this uh, forces a, a weaker AI empire to join your hegemony Federation when you defeat them. It's a special type of war goal. Uh, specifically to this federation type at level four uh, level four perks universal service we need no longer confront the angst and doubt of questions about our role in the federation when asked how much should we be, pre be prepared to give the only answer is everything so again this gives another plus five percent resources from jobs to the members of the hegemony so even being a member used to you still get some benefits plus 15 percent bonus resources from all jobs it's pretty good <laughs> political overseers mutually beneficial agreements between member nations are much easier to coordinate when supervisory agents from the leader nation are directly embedded in each member's governing apparatus this is a modifier that affects federation members research agreements and migration pacts between federations members cost no influence in their upkeep so uh, when you want to share technologies and make and form research agreements with other people in the hegemony, uh, once you get it, to, once you get the federation to level four, you get this perk, and uh, it costs no influence uh, to 
for upkeep to maintain that. Same with the migration treaties um, or migration packs, as I said, there, as it says there. So that's, that's that's an okay bonus. Uh, and lastly, sanctity of office. Rising to the highest office in our federation is no royal coronation. It is a limitless commitment in service to all sentient life. Nevertheless, the presidency comes with a great deal of prestige. This gives plus one federation influence gain to the president. So you get a little bit more influence each month if you are the president of the hegemony and you get it to level four. And finally, at level five, level five perks, stronger together. This is actually a perk that the Galactic Union Federation type gets, albeit at a lower level. And it actually gets uh, an upgrade to this one as well. Collective deterrence against hegem he sorry, collective deterrence against hegemonic aggressors has preserved the fragile peace of this galaxy. We will stand together against all who threaten that order, whether from within or without. This gives you a damage bonus to endgame crisis factions by plus 25%. This combos nicely with Defender of the Galaxy. That's a 75% damage bonus just from that. Now, a Galactic Union Federation at level 5 actually has two of those perks. I believe one of them is at level 4 and the other one is at level 5. And it gets two of those, so it actually the Federation alone gets a plus 50% damage bonus to endgame crisis factions. Combine that with Defender of the Galaxy, that's 100% damage bonus. Pretty good. Unifying Might. To know that our joint fleets are patrolling the void bestows our members with a sense of pride, security, and resolve. I was half expecting it to say pride and accomplishment. <laughs> Federation Modifier. Monthly unity equal to 10% of the size of the Federation fleet. So the bigger your Federation fleet is, you get more monthly unity. Uh, throughout the Federation. This is a modifier that applies to everybody within the Federation, not just the members or the President. Hegemonic Privilege. The might of the ruler cannot be undermined at any point. Full and active support from the Hegemony's subjects is imperative. The This is a Federation modifier, so it applies to everybody. Every member transfers 10% of their diplomatic weight to the President. So if you get your Hegemony to level 5, and you have some moderately powerful but still weaker than you um, AI empires in the hegemony with you, and you unlock your hegemony federation to level five, uh, however much diplomatic weight they have, 10% of it gets transferred to you. So it just makes you stronger within the galact within the galactic community. It does weaken their position within the galactic community as well. But if the more member states you have in the hegemony, the more diplomatic weight you get because you have more members giving it to you. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so another thing that federations did is that we can play around with a lot more of these laws, these federation laws. Uh, I'm not sure who remembers, but if you scroll down succession term, federation fleet construction, can subjects join and vote wait. So pretty much a lot of these ones, war declaration, invite members, kick members, free migration, separate treaties. I'm pretty sure that, uh, that most, if not all of these, had like one option available. And you couldn't really dick around with any of them and change stuff except for centralization, fleet contribution, and I think succession type. Um, so you have different types of succession. Uh, rotation, the presidency is rotated between member empires whenever a term ends. So in a galactic union, this is the default succession type. Uh, and changing it to anything else in a, gal in a galactic union uh, lowers monthly cohesion. But because it's a hegemony, it's the strong is set to strongest. The president will be chosen for the most powerful empire depending on which succession power is chosen. The succession power laws will become available when this law is active. Uh, there's also random. Whenever a term comes to end, another member is randomly chosen to become the new president. That's an, that's a possible one. Uh, and challenge. The Federation chooses its president by challenge. May the best win. Uh, so that's a pretty interesting one there. Uh, so succession power, the, there's four different ways that you determine who becomes the president of your Federation for the next term. So you can have it set to economy. The president should be chosen from the empire with the strongest economy. Diplomatic weight. The president should be chosen from the empire with the largest diplomatic weight. Uh, this That's the currently active one at the start of the game for the hegemon origin. Technology. The president should be chosen from the empire with the most advanced technology. 
Uh, this one could be good if you're playing tall and really focusing on research. And lastly, fleets. If you enjoy playing wide, building lots of ships, and just having a really big military force present at all times, the president should be chosen from the Empire with the largest and most powerful navy. So that's an option available to you as well. Uh, you can also change succession term. Uh, this, of course, requires uh, changing, uh, po quite possibly changing the centralization within, within the Federation um, as well. Fle Federation fleet construction. Everyone, any member may order the construction of new ships to the Federation fleet or only the leader. Only the president may order the construction of new ships to the Federation fleet. Can subjects join? No, subjects may not join the Federation. Yes, subjects are allowed to join the Federation. So if... Uh, if an alien empire is subjugated by you or one of the members, uh, with can subjects join? Yet yeah, set to yes, obviously they can become part of your federation. Uh, vote weight equal. Every member has one vote, and each vote has equal value. Diplomatic votes are determined by diplomatic weight. More influential members wield more power. So if you are if you are holding the most diplomatic weight within your federation, you could change this to vote weight diplomatic and swing your bigger dick around within your federation not just the galactic community but within your federation as well uh, war declaration unanimous vote all members have to agree to declare any wars or a majority vote a majority vote of members decides if wars will be declared or the president decides the president of the federation decides if wars will be declared uh, so again if you are playing in a hegemony you can give yourself more power, more power, more power. It's all about making the president uh, stronger. Uh, invite members. Unanimous vote. New Federation members have to be approved by all current members. Majority vote. New Federation members have to be approved by a majority vote. President decides. The president decides if a new member will be accepted or not. Uh, set to president decides, obviously. Kick members. Majority vote or president decides. Free migration. Enabled and disabled. Separate treaties. Allowed or prohibited. So... When separate treaties are allowed, Federation members are allowed to sign diplomatic agreements with empires outside the Federation. If it's prohibited, Federation members are prohibited from having research agreements, migration treaties, or commercial pacts with empires outside the Federation. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Let's just sign our envoy to this particular Federation just to see what happens. We are losing Federation XP. I don't really care right now. All right. Uh, we're going to quickly uh, zip to a later point in the game. Hopefully, we can create the Incoming galactic community. Uh, ooh, migration treaty proposal. Okay, sure, whatever. Uh, research agreement. Where I'm going to decline. And how about you? Eh, whatever, don't care. And like research agreement. Definitely want to try to do those, I think. So, let's go ahead and... Uh, oh, I can't. Oops. <laughs> Oh, I have another feder I have another envoy as well. So we'll take that and assign it here. Are we playing yet? Yes, we're playing. We're not going to be, play be playing for very long. I'm, I'm just going to try to reach um, some AI empires out there in the galaxy and try to start the galactic community so that we can take a look at some of the new um, resolutions within the, within the galactic community. Because that's the thing. Uh, let's take a look at the shipyard. Let's go ahead, go ahead and build another science ship. Uh -huh. And then we do the usual. I did all this stuff before unpause. Or sorry, I usually do all this stuff before unpausing the game, but I didn't. So take off the FTL drive. Take off all the components. Save and close. And then we tell our fleet to go upgrade. We get a bunch of alloys Ships for it. Okay, so we... The route book in Zarmada has been fully upgraded. Okay, so we could continue down the diplomacy tree. Um so that uh, we can finish off this tradition tree and get our first ascension perk a little bit faster. Uh, ooh, rare crystals discovered. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's finish it off. Why don't we? Why not? Uh, and then we go to shipyard. I've got 200 alloys, so let's go ahead and do a couple more science ships. Uh, we need some new scientists, I would say about three. Rover's good. Uh, research, whatever that is. Oh, we don't have enough energy, really. Incoming us go ahead and fix that. Sell a bunch of food. And that's eh, not selling any minerals, but we'll sell our consumer goods. And people, uh, expertise industry, sure, I'll take that. And then expertise voidcraft, yes, please. Uh, somebody's talking to us. 
Research agreement? Yep, we'll take that. Re migration treaty? No. Migration treaty? No. It's weird. Zach Toll went too slow and you're going too fast. Never. Science ship. A hostile hijacked fleet in Imaka. Huh. Okay. The Throne of God. Centuries ago, a group of radical priests and their devoted followers on Savatia broke away from the established religions to form their own church. These extremists the, called themselves the Throne of God and have been responsible for many atrocities and acts of terror over the years. Although they have kept a low profile in modern times, we recently learned that many of their agents have infiltrated our military. These renegades have secretly been diverting resources to the construction of a small fleet of starships at a hidden facility on Savasia. When their treachery was revealed, the cultists blasted it into orbit on their ships and fled Situation. to Garbanog's dwelling. Okay. They must be stopped. Uh, you know what? The starbase alone can handle them. Sonified science. Okay, cool. This, uh, yeah. Our core veterans are just going to fly around and like not do anything because they have no weapons, so... The Starbase will just deal with it on its own. Uh, the Gert trained to make Mega Crater and establish a new branch office. Okay, cool. And, ooh, there we go. Biodiversity studies and quantum theory. Let's get genome mapping. Situation Cultist ship updated. disabled. I don't care. I need to do other stuff. Base trade protection. Market fee reduced 10%. We'll take that. And Situation the first updated. league. Ooh, not a bad start. Uh, a commendable okay. initiative, habitable research stuff. Sure. All right, we got our science ships. Research so, um, an effective strategy when you take either the uh, common ground or hegemon uh, origin is that you super duper quickly explore uh, in the immediate area and then build a star base, uh, preventing your allies from actually uh, expanding themselves. Uh, which is, which sounds like it might be, you know, like shooting yourself in the foot, but no, not at all. It's a handy dandy le neat little trick where you prevent them from stealing space that could be used for you and you lock it down for yourself. They still, uh, they still donate various aspects of, um, their empire to you or to the federation that you're in or whatever. Ooh, situation lock. Thanks. That's cool. It shows a little alert thingy when you have a new situation log entry. I like that. Uh, anyways. So, yeah. Uh, little mining stations. Oh, you ran away. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, is that a little... It's a little humanoid Corvette. System Eight. survey complete. The Vistramar system has been fully surveyed. Um, so, yeah. It's entirely possible that you're still getting the benefits of being in a federation with other empires. You're just... Know, locking them off from expanding and stealing space and potentially habitable worlds, that would be, be that would be better served for you. We definitely want uh, this system. It has a bunch of rare crystals. Uh, sec secure shipping. We'll take that bad boy. There's really just there's just specific things that I'm looking for, uh, Razor. In all honesty, I'm not trying to show off every little thing. Uh, that comes with the DLC and whatnot. I'm just trying to cover a couple little things, and I would like to show some of the Research new, uh, what's it called, resolutions that are in the galactic community. But in order to do that, we have to find at least a, one, maybe a couple more uh, AI uh, out there in the galaxy. So I'm going to try to do that. Unfortunately, most of my science ships are just exploring the space immediately around me which may not have been the right move. Okay, so the big thing here is we want to try to take the system of Clea and construct a star base in it ASAP before one of these other guys grabs it, because if they grab it, then that limits our ability to expand. But if we grab it, then we can expand as much as we want uh, while they cannot expand outwards and grab territory that would better serve our needs, because we're selfish pricks like that. Let's go ahead and get a few more science ships. I can get three more. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. And scientists. We need three more. We're a new leader. Uh, let's go ahead and do expertise statecraft. Sure. How about... Ooh. Scientist herbidibrider. Let's take care free. That's an okay one. Resilient. Eh, don't care. Uh, we'll do a biology expert. That'll work. Uh, engineering. Robotic workers. Yeah, sure. Take that. Uh, solar sailor. All right, got some engineering That's research. Uh oh, 
Well, that's not good. He's going to build a star base down there. That sucks. Yeah, see, that's exactly what it's doing. So, unfortunately, that's going to lock us off from expanding over in that direction now. So, oh well. What is that? Epsilon aliens. Alien vessels. What are we looking at? Whoa! Ancient life pod. What the heck was that? Yikes! I wonder if that was a pirate fleet. And we finish off. Diplomacy. Bam! First, effect, first ascension perk. Just like that. Let's go ahead and just do technological ascendancy. Oh. Oh. I like how he's, it still says we have that hostile ship over there. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, we'll do off for trade companies, sure. Ooh, rel relative difficulty, hellish. <laughs> uh, encounter in Emeka, nope. Uh, let's back out of that one. It said 180, so why has that changed? Okay, I guess it takes a second to update. That's too bad. Uh, buh, 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 buh. field modulation. Get some more energy credits from j -j 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 jobs. All right, we got a science ship that's just chilling. We're gonna fix that, and let's go this way. You know what? Let's just set people to explore for a little bit here. Want to find? We want to find some aliens, so we're just gonna send them off to explore, and uh, you know, do stuff. So go this way. Actually, there might be an alien empire over here, so let's have this one go over here and check these systems out really quick. Gotta try to find those aliens. Alien empire in Gotara. That's because it is an enclave. I don't care. Research complete. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Uh, we also get some new music. Thanks to... Uh, Ooh, carrier operations, yes please. Uh, thanks to Federations. So we have a few new tracks. Uh, one of them, uh, A Brighter Tomorrow, I do believe is already in the base game since we got the update to 2.6. Uh, this is in there. This is actually my favorite track from the Federations DLC. Um, it's very upbeat. Kind of kind of Star Trek-y if you ask me. Uh, the other three are way the hell down here. We've got Unity and Paperwork. Uh, had he Hegemonic Dominion, and Call to Assembly. Those are the three um, DLC tracks uh, that require you to purchase and download the Federation's DLC. Oh my gosh! I'm not even going to continue playing this game, and bam, look at that. Right there, Ruined Matter Decompressor. Son of a bitch. Why don't I get these in my Iron Man games? God damn it! <laughs> It's bullshit! Hostile fleet. Bullshit! <laughs> you gotta System be kidding me. Royal Duke Jam, what's up, buddy? I'm not sure how much longer we're gonna be streaming, bud, but I appreciate you coming by. Nonetheless, good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Sorry, right, let's get a robot assembly plant on our home world. Uh, we got a science ship that's just chilling. Where are you? Over here. Okay, so we got hostile fleets over here. We're gonna ignore that direction. Let's just send a science ship way over that way. Go explore, please. Now, these guys need to continue exploring over here. Research and complete. where's the other one? This one here. You explore down in this direction, please. Uh, Off-road trading companies. Uh, what do we got here? Communications established with Zuracore. Yay. Uh, let's do eco simulation. Sure. And new, new tradition available. Why is there a hostile? Oh, yeah, that's... Duh. All right, so we probably... In fact, we definitely... Come on, now. Why can't I select my construction ship? Automated Dreadnought. Look at the size of that thing! Uh, Oops. Leviathan. I'll bet you... Oh, no, that's a science ship. Sorry. So we construct a um, thingy over there. Of course, this person... No crazy species this time. We're, this is not a stream game. I'm, we're just trying to check out some of the cool stuff uh, from Federations. As well as uh, a little bit of the stuff that we get in the uh, version 2.8 update. I like this. I like this. You, know, you get these little, uh, the little alert symbol when a new thing is added to the situation log. That's cool. I appreciate that. Complete. 
Uh, that's a pretty awesome, uh, pretty awesome addition. Okay, automated exploration protocols done. Let's do zero G laboratories. Sure. Uh, eco simulation done. Uh, let's do food processing. Sure. Engineering. Uh, I don't know. Assembly speed. Assembly patterns. Sure. Um, we're playing on fastest speed, and the uh, the game time is going at an at, a, at an acceptable pace, if you ask me. Uh oh, we're short on consumer goods. <laughs> Whoops. Population. Let's lock out clerks. I need more miners. Thank you. We'll add another mining district and lock out that clerk again because we have plus three amenities. That's more than enough. Oh my gosh. The automated dreadnought and the Tianki matriarch. All like right around us pretty much. Okay, so... Rather than look in system to select this science ship or go into the outliner, we just press and hold this, select it with the radial menu. Bam. Easy. Explore over this way. Actually, explore this way, please. Communications established with the artisan troop. Interesting. Very good, very good. All right, same thing over here. Select the science ship with the radial menu. I like that. That is cool. That is going to be handy. i got to get used to uh, using it, of course. Um, all right, let's continue flying around. We're just exploring We're systems, so trying to bump into some AI empires so that we can form the galactic community and check out some cool stuff. Oh, ooh, ooh. Eey, yikes, don't know what that was. Uh, all right, so let's get you going over this way immediately then. You can loop around uh, a little bit later. Can you show We're me so something good. new? Trying to. Uh, let's see, food processing, stellar expansion, cloning, we'll take that. Uh, what else do they do with the update? There should be... Is there cool visual flair added to... Whoa. I actually forgot that there was a ruined matter decompressor in here. Um, oh, that's right. We're supposed to be able to see like space storms and that kind of crap now, too. Uh, where would I find something like that? Nebula. I need a nebula. Uh, I don't think I have one anywhere near my <laughs> anywhere near my territory. Though. That's too bad. Counter in the Great Wound. Wow. We've got the Tianki Matriarch. We've got the Automated Dreadnought. We've got the Great Wound. Yikes. I usually don't get all this cool stuff in a, in a single game. Keyword there is usually. Let's build this starbase. Enfotech, what's up? Well, I just started to figure things out. Now I got to learn federations. Man, I love this game. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's really not there's really not a hell of a lot to learn. You just got to understand that there is more stuff that you can do uh, diplomacy-wise, which, you know, take it or leave it. It can be neat. It can be just kind of, eh, whatever. I'm more of an eh, whatever kind of person, but, I, you know, it is nice to know that there is... Um, a federation type out there for me to uh, exact my will on my willing on, on my uh, possibly unwilling subjects. Research complete. And yes, I'm talking about the hegemon or uh, hegemony, I should say. Let's get chemical plants, science ships. Keep exploring. Keep exploring. All right, go 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 go. And you. Oh, that looks like... Ooh, we have encountered... We have encountered another empire. Natural wormhole. Hello. What are these guys doing? Communications established with a Karelian Grand Duchy. What's up? Chairwoman What's-Her-Face greets you. Hello. How are you? Research complete. Well, son of a bitch... And another thing, too, is that they changed this so that the notifications... I'm noticing that the ones involving a transmission uh, from an AI empire contacting me, or I should say us, those notifications have that circle around them now, which is really cool. I like that. That's a nice little addition. Uh, so this person... Really go ahead and... Uh, oh, borders are open. Okay. Fine. We'll keep it there. Space storms are pretty cool. Storm winds also cool. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to find one, uh, Strength Norse. I don't know if it's going to work out, though. Let's go ahead and improve relations with this person. Why do they dislike us so much? Holy shit. 
Uh, trust. Where is their opinion of a suspicious, belligerent membership? Blah blah blah. blah. Why does it? What the fuck? Neutral relations. Why do they have? Oh, infidel unbelievers. New contact material is fluid. Blah blah blah. blah. All right, let's. Uh, we shall assign an envoy. Because that's not broken at all. There we go. Okay. Galactic community. Yes, this is a worthy endeavor. Hopefully this passes. And then we'll take a look at the new resolutions that are available. Uh, and what they can mean on uh, the galaxy at large. See, there we go. There's more space dusty looking things. This looks like another alien empire that we've encountered. Already has... Ooh, what the... Did I see that right? Oh, no. They already have that many colonies. Holy shit. That was fast. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Veracus Black Hole. All right, quickly. Fly over here. Move. Go. Need to establish communications. Uh, ruined Ring World. Holy crap. All sorts of cool stuff in this particular game. See, I don't get this kind of stuff when I just play an Iron Man game. Damn it. All right, moving on. Uh, Empire Capital. Ooh, communications established with the Verksack Commerce League. There we go. A new alien empire has been communicated with. Volatile material plants. Okay, let's get cold fusion. We're good. Did the galactic community form or no? Interesting. Did w I wonder if there was enough support for it. That would really suck if there wasn't. Okay, what do we need? We need energy credits. There we go. Never mind. I lied. A great day for the galaxy. Okay, finally. That always takes a bit. Okay, so galactic community. Now when we go to look at the uh, resolutions, you'll notice that there's quite a few more. And you can also denounce uh, AI or, or other empires, I should say. How do you do that? I'm not sure. Like a, that is a good question. Do, 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 offer trade deal, blah, 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 blah. Is that an option in here? No, it is not. Okay. That's perfectly fine. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to the galactic community thing. Okay, so resolutions. Uh, commerce and industry, you still got galactic commerce. You'll notice that now with the DLC, instead of instead of bringing open the drop down and there's only it go, only goes up to um, basically a tier three resolution, you'll notice that there is, in fact, it goes all the way down to a tier five resolution council that's another thing too uh let's see where that is so galactic commerce it you would normally only go up to like i think underdeveloped system utilization where you get plus 60 percent diplomatic weight from economy plus 15 percent trade value plus 25 percent bureaucrat upkeep plus 10 trade protection minus 10 percent naval capacity observation posts provide consumer goods while observing or infiltrating primitive civilizations and then you've got the very last one. You got tier, the tier four and the or sorry, the tier four and the tier five. Yes, and at tier five, diplomatic weight from economy plus one hundred percent. So no longer just a sixty percent bonus to diplomatic weight from economy or technology or whatever, depending on which re resolutions you're pushing for. Um, it can go all the way up to plus one hundred percent. Galactic market. Ban organic slave trade. Sentient organics can no longer be sold on the slave market. That's a thing. Sanctions. Commerce and industry. You've got uh, harder sanctions. Major economic sanctions. Plus 30% market fee and minus 60% diplomatic weight from economy. This is for empires that have been denounced or are in breach of galactic law. Uh, so this is actually... Uh, can really make things tough for people that... Uh, you do not like galactic reforms form galactic council establishes a galactic council of three members the council begins with the powers to push emergency members propose sanction resolutions and denounce uh so i guess that's what you refer we're referring to there razor was in order to be able to denounce another empire you have to uh, form the galactic council and be a part of it you can also change the size of the Galactic Council. See, it says uh, it's um, 
It's, it says that it establishes a galactic council of three members. You can change that down to one if you want, where you're the only person on the actual galactic council. And then you've got uh, stuff here. The greater good diplomatic weight from POPs, plus 20%. Worker happiness, plus 5%. Worker's political power, plus 10%. Uh, that continues to go up. Uh, Agri-world generator and mining planetary designations gain additional bonuses when you pass the five-year plans resolution. Basic subsist subsistence living standard banned. Uh, the next one down unlocked an, unlocks an edict that encourages unemployed worker and simple drone pops to voluntarily resettle themselves to suitable planets with jobs and housing within our empire. Uh, basic subsistence and stratified economy living standards are banned. Chattel slavery, livestock, and grid amalgamation slavery types are banned. Uh, this is This used to be the highest tier for the greater good you could get to. This gives you plus 60% diplomatic weight from pops. Plus 50% workers' political power and plus 5% workers' happiness. But you can go all the way to Tier 5. At Tier 4, basic subsistence, stratified economy, decent conditions, and academic privilege living standards are banned. Slavery of all types is banned. Uh, modifiers, diplomatic weight from POPs, 80, plus 80% worker happiness, plus 5% workers' political power, plus 75%. Empire sprawl from POPs, minus 10%. POP housing usage, minus 10%. Those are decent bonuses. However, all this stuff that's banned is not that great. That basically forces you to only use utopian living standards, pretty much. Just about. All living standards other than shared burdens, utopian abundance, chemical bliss, or mandatory pampering are banned. Assimilating organics into a driven assimilator or hive mind empire is banned. Empires that are not egalitarian or rogue servitors may be unable to meet these requirements and will be in breach of galactic law. Banned! <laughs> So, this gives you plus 100% diplomatic weight from POPs, plus 5% worker happiness, plus 100% worker's political, political power, minus 10% empire sprawl from POPs, minus 10% POP housing usage, plus 5 stability, which is pretty decent. That's 3% bonus resource production on all colonies, but minus 10,000 resource storage capacity. That's kind of poopy. Uh, what else do you have there? Uh, I am genuinely curious. Environment and technology. You. This must be a new one. D Divinity of life. Comfort the fallen. Unemployed workers have their unhappiness penalty reduced by 10%. Modifiers. Diplomatic weight from tech. Minus 20%. Pfft. Spiritualist ethics attraction. Plus 10%. Pfft. Unity from jobs. Plus 5%. That's not bad. This tithe of the soulless. Modifiers. Diplomatic weight from tech. Minus 40%. Spiritualist ethics attraction. Plus 20%. Pfft. Unity from jobs, plus 10%. Pops consumer goods upkeep, minus 5%. Pop assembly cost, plus 25%. That applies to robots. Uh, constructing robots, or if you're a machine empire, constructing more drones. Uh, robot upkeep, plus 10%. Uh, next one down. Unemployed organic pops gain priority for jobs over robotic pops. <laughs> Diplomatic weight from tech, minus 60%. Spiritualist ethics, ethics attraction, plus 30%. Unity from jobs, plus 15%. Pop consumer goods upkeep, minus 5%. Assembly cost and assembly speed are worsened by 25%. And robot upkeep is still increased by 10%. Hey, Mobius, can you say banned again? What? Banned? You better not keep taunting me like that, Joe Frogman. Are you going to be banned? The Synthetic Evolution Special Project is banned. This is Silence the Soulless. Diplomatic weight from tech, minus 80%. Spiritualist ethics attraction, plus 40%. Plus 20% unity from jobs. Minus 20, minus 5% pop consumer goods upkeep. Plus 50% pop assembly, pop assembly cost. Plus 20% robot upkeep. Minus 25% pop assembly speed. Uh, this is awful. I don't like this at all. This is this is terrible. I will never pick these resolutions ever. <laughs> Check checker depends may have left the rosebud in there maybe. <laughs> the synthetic citizen rights artificial intelligence policy is banned. This is a defined purpose. Machine intelligence empires that are not rogue servitors are in breach of galactic law, but will be given the option to embrace the civic. So normally you cannot change um, the different types 
of special civics as a machine empire and even as an organic empire like devouring swarm fanatic purifiers and then for machine empires rogue servitors driven driven assimilators and um determined exterminators um so this is like the one if possibly the one and only way that you have the chance to change that because uh Machine intelligence empires that are not rogue servitors are in breach of galactic law, but will be given the option to embrace the civics. So what I'm thinking is if this resolution passes, you have the ability to reform your government and adopt the rogue servitors um, machine civic. Modifiers. Diplomatic weight from tech. Minus 100%. <laughs> Spiritualist ethics attraction. Plus 50%. <laughs> Unity from jobs. Plus 30%. Pops consumer goods. Upkeep minus 10%. Pop assembly cost plus 50%. <laughs> Robot upkeep plus 20%. <laughs> Pop assembly speed minus 25%. <laughs> Biological and lithoid pop happiness plus 10% each. Those are kind of decent, but ugh, ugh. Terrible, terrible. Dingleberries. <laughs> Self banned. <laughs> space fauna. This applies to things like Tianki whales and space amoeba, I do believe, or just the Tianki, I guess. Never mind. Tianki pest control. Any empire with Tianki inside their borders are in breach of galactic law until the creatures are destroyed or leave of their own accord. <laughs> That's a good one. Tianki Conservation Act. Any empire that kills a Tianki will be considered in breach of galactic law. <laughs> so you can either hunt them down or protect them. Your call. Uh, defense and war doesn't look like anything is new in here. Mutual defense. Let's take a look at the bonuses. So it used to be the enemy of my enemy was as far as we could go to the tier three uh, resolution. But with federations, we could go to the tier five. Um, military Re readiness act. Galactic community members that are not vassals of another empire that are using less than half of their naval capacity are in breach of galactic law. And then at tier three, the enemy of my enemy, this grants the counterattack Cassus Belli on empires that are not galactic community members and are in an offensive war against a galactic community member. Uh, so that was an interesting thing. Now we take a look at castigation proclamation. Any empire in the galactic community can propose a resolution to denounce an empire in breach of galactic law or that is not a galactic community member. So you either are part of the Galactic Council or you have to have Castigation Proclamation. The Animosity Cassus Belli and Humiliation War Goal can be used by empires with unrestricted wars against empires that have been denounced by the Galactic Community or are in breach of Galactic Law. This gives you plus 80% diplomatic weight from fleet power, plus 40 naval capacity, but plus 20% naval, or sorry, ship upkeep, excuse me. Uh, what do you got there? Sorry, I missed that, buddy. I started my hegemon at 9.30 a.m. at 9.30 p.m. just in time to catch you saying, BANNED! <laughs> Did you know that the empire I put into the Cold War, the Moby Dick anti-eco-politic proposed the Conservation Act in-game? That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. I like that. Yeah, I like how they put that empire in there. That was pretty funny when I saw that. The Moby Dick anti-eco politic. I'm like, what? <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> okay. Renegade Containment Doctrine. This is the final tier of mutual defense. Grants the preemptive war, total war, Cassus Belli on empires that are not members of the galactic community for empires with unrestricted wars. So, members of the galactic... So, mem uh... Members that are not, or sorry, uh, how do Jesus Christ, empires, but uh, not members of the galactic community that have unrestricted wars, uh, war policy, I do believe. Uh, I, yes, I do, I believe I'm understanding that correctly. Uh, but this also gives you diplomatic weight from fleet power plus 100%, naval capacity plus 50, and ship upkeep plus 25%. No, no, I know, I know you came up with the empire. I, I understand that. I'm just, I'm genuinely curious what made them choose that empire over over other possible ones because that was pretty awesome to see. And I and I didn't actually. I, I also was curious what the uh, what the actual uh, settings for it were. That would have been 
That would have been cool to know. I didn't get the chance to see all that. Uh, rules of War. So this is one that had Guardian Angels Act, Reverence for Life, and Independent Tribunals. This this reduced uh, diplomatic weight from fleet power. DJ asked me if I wanted to add one. Hive mind. Oh, okay. I didn't realize he asked you directly. I figured it would be a... Uh, tried to make it strong. <laughs> no worries. I figured it was going to be like, hey, do you have suggestions? Put them here or something. And it was picked died <laughs> yeah i know that's okay it was an ai empire and you had people like ace back and uh stefan and them playing so i wasn't expecting it to be <laughs> in there anyways uh so the uh the rules of war this reduces diplomatic weight from fleet power increases defense army morale and increases army upkeep as well uh, so at tier two purging other than displacement and the use of world crackers is banned um Modifiers, diplomatic weight from fleet power, minus 40%. Defense army morale, plus 15%. Army upkeep, plus 5%. War exhaustion gain, minus 5%. Independent tribunals. Uh, the Armageddon and indiscriminate bombardment stances and using any colossus weapon other than a global pacifier are banned. Minus 60% diplomatic weight from fleet power, plus 15% defense army morale, plus 15% army upkeep, minus 10% war exhaustion gain, and minus 20% army collateral damage, so armies will cause less devastation on the planet. So that was the highest tier, but with federations, you go to tier 4 and tier 5. At tier 4, the unrestricted wars war philosophy is banned. Uh, ship build speed in a defensive war is increased by plus 25%, and pacifist ethics attraction is increased by 50%. <laughs> uh, and lastly, demobilization initiative. The militarized economy economic policy is banned. This is where uh, your trade, or sorry, not your trade value, this is where it turns uh, your economic policy, you can have it so that uh, you get more production either from your workers for uh, energy credits, minerals, and food, and reduced production from your specialists for particularly uh, consumer goods and alloys, or you change it to a militarized economy where consumer goods and alloys have another production bonus and your other your workers have a production deficit. Or sorry, production malice, excuse me. Uh, so reduced production from food uh, minerals and energy credits. This gives you minus 100% diplomatic weight from fleet power, plus 50% defense army morale still, plus 15% army upkeep, minus 20% war exhaustion gain, minus 20% army collateral damage, plus 25% ship build speed in a defensive war. That's pretty decent. Pacifist ethics attraction plus 100%, <laughs> edict duration plus 20%, and naval capacity minus 25%. So this is if you're trying to go like really, really pacifist in within the uh, galactic community. And then let's take a look at galactic priorities. Form the galactic market. Eh. And then if another, uh, if another, if an uh, end game crisis showed up, that would also be uh, a thing focused on the end game crisis. So uh, unchained knowledge. This is one that I want to look at. This is just more diplomatic weight from tech, more research station output, and increased starbase upkeep. Astral Studies Network at Tier 2 enhances the effectiveness of the solar panel network, black hole observatory, and listening post starbase modules and building, buildings. Uh, so plus 40% diplomatic weight from tech, plus 20% research station output, planet sensor range plus 1, plus 10% starbase upkeep. And then Tier 3... Observation posts provide additional society research while observing or infiltrating primitive civilizations. Enhances the effectiveness of the art college, curator think tank, and trader proxy office starbase buildings. The artificial intelligence outlawed and passive nat native studies policies are banned. Uh, so passive native, native studies is where you just have an observation post and you let it collect data on a primitive native, and on, sorry, on a primitive uh, civilization, you don't abduct them to dissect them or anything like that. That policy gets banned. That's sort. That's pretty interesting. Actually, sorry, it's a policy, so we'll take a look at it in just a second. Uh, plus sixty percent diplomatic weight from tech, plus thirty percent research station output, plus fifteen percent starbase upkeep, and plus one planet sensor range. At tier four, we have ethical guideline refactoring. Empires must use the most powerful leader enhancement policy available to them or be in breach of galactic law. Empires that are egalitarian may be unable to meet this requirement and will be in breach of galactic law. 
Modifiers, diplomatic weight from tech, plus 80%. Research station output, plus 40%. Starbase upkeep, plus 20%. Planet sensor range, plus 1%. Researcher's output, plus 10%. Worker slave happiness, both reduced by 15%. And researcher upkeep, increased by 25%. So for every single unit of consumer goods that a researcher needs to do its job, it now becomes 1.25%. Lastly, we have extra-dimensional experimentation. This unlocks a planetary decision that consumes ZRO to fund extra-dimensional research at advanced research complexes. Modifiers, diplomatic weight from tech, plus 100%. Research station output, plus 50%. That could be pretty good. Starbase upkeep, plus 25%. Planet sensor range, plus 1. Researcher's output, plus 10%. Uh, worker and slave happiness, minus 15%. Researcher upkeep, plus 50%. Woo! So that could be a big hit on your consumer goods if you have a lot of researchers. That's pretty crazy. Um, what do these ones have? Uh, so the ecological protection. This reduces your diplomatic weight from your economy. Increases food from jobs. Increases habitability. It decreases pop amenities usage. Decreases planetary build speed. Increases clear blocker time. Environmental Control Board, Tier 4. Converting planets into an Achaemenopolis or terraforming them into anything other than a Gaia world is banned. Modifiers, diplomatic weight from economy, minus 80%. Pop consumer goods, minus 5%. Clear blocker time, plus 100%. Wow. Pop amenities usage, minus 5%. Planetary build speed, minus 15%. Habitability, plus 10%. Food from jobs, plus 10%. Alloys from jobs, minus 10%. <laughs> Minerals from jobs, minus 20%. <laughs> Happiness, plus 5%. Terraforming cost, plus 25%. This sounds like a really, really terrible resolution tree to go down. <laughs> For somebody like me, anyways. Diplomatic weight from economy, minus 100%. Pop consumer goods upkeep, minus 5%. Clear blocker time, plus 200%. <laughs> Pop amenities usage, minus 5%. Planetary build speed, minus 15%. Habitability, plus 15%. That could result in some pretty decent bonuses. Keyword could, but habitability caps out at 100%. So if you're already there because of, you know, other technologies, then this doesn't really do anything for you. Food from jobs, plus 20%. Alloys from jobs, minus 30%. <laughs> Minerals from jobs, minus 50%. <laughs> Happiness, plus 10%. Terraforming costs, plus 100%. Can you imagine trying to create, create a, a machine world with that plus 100% terraforming cost? That's a base amount of 20,000 energy credits. <laughs> Pop growth speed, plus 5%. Interesting. So yeah, uh, this is just a boatload of resolutions. So there's a couple new trees here. The Galactic Reforms one to form the Galactic Council. Uh, that's a brand new tree altogether. Galactic Market. Ban Organic Slave Trader. We already looked at that one. Uh, so the Galactic Market thing is new. Galactic Reforms is new. Space Fauna and Divinity of Life is are both new resolution trees. Defense and War um, doesn't have anything new. But yeah, so... There's a, there's a couple new resolution trees altogether, but there's also new resolutions, and most of them are just, you know, higher tier, more powerful resolutions uh, for uh, for enacting within the galactic community. So this is all some pretty cool stuff, and these are this is all stuff that you get with the Federation's DLC. So you get eight new origins, uh, and you get uh, new Federation types as well. Uh, is there a way to change a federation type? I don't think so. Uh, ooh, federation type. Yeah, there it is. So, as I said, the Galactic Union is like the default one. Uh, I don't think you get any of the other types without the DLC. The Galactic Union is pretty much the only one available to you. Uh, so this is when ever you want everybody to work together to achieve a common goal, basically. Uh, research, research Cooperative. This federation is leaning towards a technocracy wherein universal truth and unceasing progress are in focus. Uh, federation Modifier. Free and automatic research agreements between all federation members. Uh, so we can change our federation type and look at the perks that you get from a research cooperative in just a second. Um, 
Hegemony federations of this type are most often built around one powerful empire surrounded by lesser sat satellite states. So we've already got that. There's also the Trade League. This federation has a clear focus on free markets and economy growth. Uh, so that's the thing. This is more for you know, probably aimed a little bit more towards uh, like Xenophile and Megacorp. Uh, empires that want to uh, band together and form a federation. And then the last one is the Martial Alliance. Members of this federation seek to close their ranks around the ideals of camaraderie, martial prowess, and military cooperation. Member modifier, ship starting experience and army starting experience both increased by another plus 100. Ship build speed, plus 25%. That's a base modifier. That's pretty good. Uh, sorry, I forgot to mention Trade League. Grants access to the Trade League trade policy, which combines the bonuses of consumer benefits and marketplace of ideas. So when you're in a Trade League, you can change it to uh, the Trade League trade policy, where instead of con uh, instead of having to choose between consumer benefits, which converts some of your trade uh, trade value into consumer goods, or marketplace of ideas, which converts some of your trade value into uh, unity, you get the trade league trade policy, which does both. That's a pretty cool bonus. I think they added a ring menu in Federations. Uh, no, the radial menu is part of the 2.8 update uh, to consoles here. So let's go ahead and change our uh, Federation type to a research cooperative, shall we? Let's see what happens. Do, 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 do. It succeeded. Okay, cool. Uh, faction founded, blah, 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 whatever. Go away. I don't care. Shut up. Uh, okay, so now we look at our federation, and we can see that it's a research cooperative. Uh, so we get different, we get different things. Uh, so level one perk, research cooperative. This federation is leaning towards a technology, blah blah blah. Free and automatic research agreements between all federation members. At level two, we get some. Ooh, un let's pause the game. Sorry. Level two perks: academic contacts. No being can own knowledge. We hereby resolve to break the, with the practice of hoarding scientific discovery, one which impedes true progress in the galaxy. Federation modifier, federal research agreements have their research speed increased by 5%. Uh, so whenever you're in a research agreement, you get, I think it's a, what, 30% uh, bonus to research speed if you are researching a technology that, a number, that another empire has researched. 25. Okay. 25. Okay. Thank you, Razor. So this bumps it up from 25% uh, to uh, 30%. It's still, yeah, like you said, it's a really good boost. Real-time peer review. If new prototypes and theories are conveyed to every research institution in our cooperative via FTL comms, they can be subjected to multiple sources of independent review and perfected with lightning speed. This is a member modifier. They get 5% bonus research speed. And lastly, executive research branch. Purely theoretical science plays a vital role, of course, but there are cases where targeted research, following priorities designated at the highest level, can have enormous impact. This is a modifier for the president. They get plus one research alternatives, uh, which is pretty, pretty dang good. Level three perks. Language of science. Every member species had their own version of taxonomy, the periodic table, and other tools of knowledge exchange. By settling on a common lexicon, ideas can be transmitted with minimal confusion. This is a federation modifier. Federal research agreements have their research speed increased by another 5%. And I'm pretty sure that this goes up with every level of this particular uh, federation. So it, in total, it would bump it up to what? This would be 35%, next would be 40%, and then 45%. So if you're researching a technology that another that another Federation member has, and you're in a level 5 research cooperative, you're getting a 45% bonus to research speed to research that technology for yourself. Scientific inf inspiration. This, these are level 3 perks still. Uh, the interstellar, multi-species nature of our cooperative exposes scientists to, to perspectives quite literally alien to their own, resulting in a great boost to outside-the-box thinking. Member modifier, rare technologies already unlocked by another Federation member now appear at two times the normal rate. This effect would change a 1% chance into a 2% chance. So this pairs up with, uh, what's it called? Technological ascendancy. Um, increasing the odds of rare technologies showing up by a pretty significant margin um, if, uh, if you're in a research cooperative. And lastly, we have, uh, for a tier uh, level 3 perk, we have Technocrat. 
We will reorganize our society according to the radical idea that those who possess expert knowledge within a certain sphere shall wield decision-making power there. President modifier diplomatic weight from tech plus 20%. So that's basically additional diplomatic weight equivalent to tier one of the unchained knowledge um, galactic uh, community resolution. So that, that's quite a bit. Uh, level four perks, license production. A great invention that never leaves its home world is of limited academic or social value. We will incentivize license production of such innovations to speed their propagation. This gives you another 5% bonus to federal research agreements. Uh, research mobilization. When faced with an obvious and imminent threat to all galactic life, the scientific community must be prepared to set aside abstract experimentation in favor of purely defensive applications. This is a member modifier. During an ongoing endgame crisis, gain 20% research speed. That's quite a bit. And uh, that can really help out with repeatable technologies in the late game. Federal Envoys. The better future we're striving to build will only work if all beings are aware of what we mean to achieve. We intend to become a pervasive, persuasive force for peace in the galaxy. This is a president modifier. It gives them plus one Envoys. And then, of course, level five. These are the level five perks. Universal Database. The Universal Database has become a sort of technological holy text containing the accumulated knowledge of all our member species. Even if individuals forget or if empires fall, the Universal Database will endure. Federation Modifier. This gives you another plus 5% research speed to federal research agreements. Uh, suspended Ethical Protocols. No taboo is too strong. No moral precepts too sacrosanct when the only alternative is complete annihilation. During an ongoing end game crisis, you gain another 20% research speed. So a level 5 research cooperative is getting 40% research speed during an end game crisis. That's pretty crazy. Strategic Construction Initiative. The ability of the executive branch to concentrate league logistical power on designated strategic projects will help to preserve the balance of power and defend our way of life. President Modifier. Megastructure build capacity plus 1. So... This is how you are able to build four megastructures at the same time. Uh, nor a normal empire would only be able to build three at the same time, I do believe, with the architectural... Is it three or is it four? I can't remember. I think it's just three, right? Master Builders arch and Architectural Renaissance uh, Unity Ambition. Yes, so three. One by default, and then with those two uh, additional modifiers, the Master Builders Ascension perk and the... Architectural Renaissance uh, Unity Ambition, which is an edict. Uh, then you can get, you know, plus two. And then if you have a level five research cooperative that you're the president of, you get another plus one megastructure build capacity. I like the addition of megastructures in the outliner. Yes, that is extremely handy. That came with the update. Uh, a free feature added without the need of DLC. So um, we can't change our federation type uh, again. Because we've already we've just done it uh, already, or can we? Huh? We can. Okay. But these guys would not be would not be for it. It has to be a unanimous vote. That sucks. Um, what would be cool is if we could change to a trade league or a martial alliance to take a look at those. But those clearly have bonuses. Like the trade league has would probably have bonuses to things like market fee or extra trade value or possibly even trade protection. Martial Alliance will be things like uh, increased ship build speed, increased naval capacity bonus, more than likely. That's just my guess. I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head, but um, that's uh, that's what I'm leaning towards. Just from you know the name of the type of federation and what what they do, for lack of a better term. But uh, anyways, yeah, I just wanted to give a qu quick preview there. I'm actually going to shut down the stream here early. We actually got very close to a full two hours. Um, so, yeah, I enjoyed myself going over uh, all that stuff. I know it was a lot of yakking on my part. Uh, so hopefully that wasn't too boring and that you kind of, you know, learned a couple uh, cool and interesting things. Lots of new resolutions in the, in the galactic community. Uh, this is all fed stuff that Federation's added, so lots of new resolutions in the, in the galactic community that are available. Uh, new types of Federations as well, uh, which is pretty cool. So it, it really just expands the diplomatic aspect of interacting with AI empires 
uh, in the game if you if you have the uh, DLC installed, which is pretty cool. I'm looking forward to playing with it some more. Uh, like I said, I should be able to start a new stream game. I'm hoping by next Tuesday on June 22nd. Uh, of course, stay tuned via Twitter or Discord, and I will uh, keep you all updated as to what's actually going on. So I'd like to extend a huge thank you to everybody who came by and joined me on tonight's live stream. JB, Strength Norse, Razor, Semper Buffo, Joe the Frogman, uh, Infotech, uh, No Dick Nick, Professor Payne, and Lord Narco, Royal Duke Jam. Great to see all you folks popping by this evening. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. Semper Buffo, no problem, buddy. Hopefully I'll uh, see you again soon. Uh, a reminder, no, there will be no stream tomorrow, unfortunately. Uh, because I will have uh, family over. We'll be, uh, I guess I'll be uh, having a little visit over the course of the weekend here, so it should be interesting. But uh, yeah, uh, uh, like I said, stay tuned. Discord or Twitter, I will post uh, when I can stream again. Uh, maybe I'll be able to stream some Mass Effect again on Monday. That would be pretty fantastic. Need to get Need to get going on that, get caught up on that. But yeah, those of you watching this in the future on YouTube, if you enjoyed the video, do give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below uh, what you think of the Federation's DLC uh, to help me out with the algorithm. I read all the comments and would like to hear your thoughts. Uh, if you wish to see more Stellaris Console Edition content or just more of my own stuff because you enjoy uh, my particular style, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified whenever I upload new videos. The goal for 2021 is to try to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of December. It's a pretty tall order, but I think we can do it together. So hopefully you hit that subscribe button and join us on the road to 10K. And of course, the best thing you can do to, uh, help, to uh, help with the channel is share this content with anybody who you think might enjoy watching it. There's also links in the description below that I highly recommend you go check out. You'll find one for the official Stellaris Discord where you can become part of the greater Stellaris community. There is a huge section for us console edition players to talk about the game, ask questions, discuss strategies, and even set up multiplayer matches. Uh, so if you want to be part of an active Discord with thousands of members who are chatting every day, that is the place to be. There's also links to my own personal stuff. You'll find one for uh, my Twitch channel, which I streamed this off of. Give me a follow and come on by during regular scheduled streams, uh, which is Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Have a good one, Royal Duke Jam. Thanks for coming by tonight, buddy. Uh, so again, that's Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, 7 p.m. Mountain Time, four days a week. Uh, that's typically 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, so pop on by. I do play uh, more than just Stellaris Console Edition on the live streams. Uh, come on in, interact with me live. It'd be great to see you there, and you can check out what I'm playing. Uh, there's also a link to my Twitter feed, as mentioned before. Give me a follow there. It's a great way to keep in touch with me, and I do post important announcements there all the time. It's also a good... Uh, it's also a good uh, alternative if uh, notifications from Twitch are not working for you because I do post on my Twitter every time I go live uh, with a stream. And last but not least, there is a link to my own personal Discord channel for you to freely join. It's not necessary whatsoever, but if you enjoy my content, I do highly recommend uh, joining it. Uh, the invite link is in the description below. We're very close to 200 members, uh, so it'd be cool to interact with you there. I do check it out daily. We have interesting talks and share funny memes, uh, but you can you know talk about whatever's on your mind. Have a good one, Infotech. JB, I'll talk to you later, buddy. Um, so yeah, uh, we also do some community community things in the Discord. For example, you can take part in viewer polls, which uh, determine the games that I play uh, on the live stream. Probably won't be able to do one of those for a little while since it's going to take me a while to play through uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition and No Man's Sky and XCOM 2. Uh, but if you wish to be a part of those in the future, uh, the, the Discord is the place to be. And there is also an ongoing community thing where if you see a really cool thing happen in one of my live streams or during a video, uh, you can post a link to it in the Discord of uh, just a little clip of... You know something really cool or awesome or funny uh, that really captured your attention and that uh, you found really memorable and I take that clip I put it together in a compilation video which will be public in January of next year basically sharing the best moments that happened this year as chosen by you the viewer so if you want to take part in any of that stuff my personal discord is the place to be all those links are in the, are in the description below 
check them out and I hope to see you either in one of the discords or during one of the live streams. In the meantime, this is Mobius Y signing out for now. Uh, I will be back as soon as I can, uh, hopefully early next week, Monday, Monday or Tuesday. Stay tuned for uh, when that will be happening. Until then, enjoy Federations, everybody. Uh, it's been a long time coming, and I'm really excited to, to try out uh, try out the new stuff that uh, has come to Stellaris Console Edition. I'll talk to you all later, and until we see each other again, take care.